into meeting today for the first session of their five-year term. The May election saw the UK Independence Party take more than 27% of the vote in the UK. Across the EU, the number of MEPs from Eurosceptic parties doubled. Well, we can go to Strasbourg and uh, try to speak again to the Conservative MP, Sajed Karim, who represents North West England and came second in the Parliament Speaker's election earlier this morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, so, uh, do, do you sense a, a palpable change in the, the in the complexion there of, of the makeup? Well, I think one thing is abundantly clear that those that want to maintain the status quo despite the European elections have actually had to come together in order to try and keep the reformists at bay. But one thing is also very clear that the reforming streak and reformist voice today in European politics is now much stronger than it has ever been. So you are genuinely now going to see movements towards bringing about the sorts of changes that people right across the European Union are asking for. Albeit, it's quite clear that the European People's Party, the Socialists and the Liberals have made a pact to come forward and try and block the sorts of changes that are required. So what, what sort of changes are you talking about? Well, there is a need, firstly, to ensure that our national parliaments have a much greater say in the way that we conduct our legislation here. There is a need to ensure that small and medium-sized enterprises, micro-enterprises, are not automatically included in all, le all legislation that we put forward here. There is a need, once again, to go away and look at the rules which govern the uh, basis upon which people can claim rights and benefits if they move from one member state to another. Now, these are all concerns that are being put forward, not just from a, a British perspective. We have many other people, many other countries, who are signed up to carrying out these exactly these forms of reformist programs. And unless we carry them out, I'm afraid it is the Union as a whole, the European Union, and the people of the European Union that will ultimately lose out. Uh, when we look, though, at the bigger picture, I mean, it, obviously there are more, um, there's a greater number of uh, MEPs in favour of reform as a result of the elections. But, but overall, that, that's not the picture, is it? And when we look at the, the recent um, election that uh, has put Jean-Claude Juncker as the incoming European Commission president, it, it paints a different story. It certainly means that the challenges ahead of us are greater than was necessary. But with the European Union, one has got to accept that you are part of a network of 28 different countries, 28 different viewpoints, and that's the basis upon which you have to work. There is now a need for us to reach out, to build those alliances in order to start delivering on uh, the reform agenda, which is not just our program, it is much wider than that. Uh, and I am confident that as we move uh, along over the next coming year to 18 months, you will see that all of these things starting to roll out. I've heard all these uh, complaints before that you simply cannot deliver on these things but we have delivered on them before and we will deliver on them again and, and just on the you know the big question of uh, referendum on Britain's membership of the European Union and um, what happened over Jean-Claude Juncker are we, are we getting closer to, to having to step out well, I think the Prime Minister at the time made it clear to all the other heads of state that there would be consequences if Mr Juncker's appointment went ahead. To my mind, what that means is that it's not just consequences for the United Kingdom. These consequences will be much wider than that. Uh, and I think in time, people will, become, uh, will come to realise that. So far as the referendum is concerned, uh, it's also now abundantly clear Germany, Berlin has come forward and said that it cannot imagine the situation of a European Union without British participation. And so it's clear there are consequences that go much beyond the UK and therefore, uh, uh, therefore it is essential that not just the UK but all of the things that the UK speaks about that other countries believe in too are a part of the reforming programme of the European Union as a whole. That is the Commission's programme, that is Council's programme and indeed this very Parliament's programme as well. Sajad Karim, Conservative MEP, thank you very much for joining us.